uh, you've got uh, steel frames laid over it. I'm quite keen on using new technologies where, where, we, where we can do it. Those are two helium balloons that we string a camera from. And do uh, a very quick survey of it with a theodolite. Um, these markers appear on photographs. And those uh, photographs are not blue. And we can draw this from a, in a nice chair in an office rather than in the next way to this in February, I think. It looks crazy. And you've got enough detail there, you can draw around individual bricks. And it actually works out more accurate as well. That's uh, the view. The north's at my end. Uh, that's the entrance here, the fireplace there. Uh, this is the south wing here. Uh, the staircase <laughs> moving back. There's a well starting to show up there. Uh, this funny little dog leg thing here is where one of the trial trenches were uh, when it was excavated in uh, was excavated in 92. And we've got the north wing with that tacked on building here. So we clean it all up carefully, photograph it. Then there's about, I think it took about a week, week and a half, two weeks. Virtually every, every wall, every, in some cases fractions of wall, gets its own unique number. And with that number goes a sheet of paper, which is what this guy's drawn, drawn spilling in here. And every single bit of the building is, has a written description. It's photographed, drawn, uh, if necessary. So we've got a total record of the building. And once that's done, we start to dismantle it brick by brick, or virtually. Uh, this is some Victorian floor make that's been taken out. And we don't just use trowels, we use pneumatic breakers. Um, that's, when we first saw that, I thought oh, it was nice and easy to sand. It turned out to be sand mixed with concrete. And we start dismantling. But we don't dismantle, we don't just packet it with um, picks. It's, we try to take it apart in the reverse order to the way it was put together. So we've got some kind of what's control on the uh, on the stratigraphy. So we understand the rel relative ages of this. Um, we put uh, what are called sections through things. So this is the um, central bit in the south way where the, chim the Victorian chimneys were. And you can see you've got this Victorian brickwork. It's filling in something there. I'll we'll explain what all how all this goes together <coughs> later. We photograph sections across walls again because that can tell us things about the, the order in which things were put together. So you can see you've got what's probably a 17th century stone wall here. And leaning against it was this brickwork, which is probably Victorian. So we know, basically because of the way it's put together and the way we've dismantled it, it we, can, we can start to assign dates to things. We've got sections across it. so. Something funny is going on here. This brick wall that's buried beneath these floors. It's obviously by the time that quarry-type floor was put down, this wall was no longer needed. Right. Yeah, start with some of the other bits. Um, that's the stonework you can see at the top there is the front wall of the house, which runs across this very deep area. I thought, we started trying to hand dig this and gave up when the bucket couldn't reach any deeper. All this stuff is 17th, perhaps possibly 16th century brick rubble in masonry. It's been dumped a very deep hole in the ground for some reason. Um, I just wonder if it's from the ruin that Curden was describing. Because before they built Newton Hall, they had to level the, level the land, so they had to bring the rest of the stable to build on. And I just wonder when they've done it, if this mill pond was actually bigger, and they've had to fill in that bit. I think that's possibly where that is. But what I do is, one of the things we do back in the office, is we try and describe to dates to things. Um, this line is the edge of the trench. And the earliest thing we found was this. It's just a shallow little gully. Um, that's it there. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a wall running across the top. And we know the gully's got to predate the wall because it runs underneath. The gully runs underneath the wall. And we've got these 
small square holes here, which are probably settings for timber posts. Those are the earliest things that you know of on the site of Newton Hall. Unfortunately, we date things by the sorts of pottery that are found in them, and we found absolutely nothing in these. All I can say with any confidence is pre-1634. And that's another bit of the same gully that's taken from the opposite side of the wall. You can see it's very shallow. Most of the building's probably gone. Whether it was a bit part of medieval, something to do with medieval manor, I don't know. I've never looked. 1634, Thomas Blackburn, or John Ireland, or William Blackburn, turn up and build their house. Um, it's classic 17th century. What you're seeing there is a plan of the building after you've stripped out all the later bits, all the Victorian additions and wings. And you've got simply two wings. This may have been slightly later on, I'm not sure. Uh, central hall here. You know, it's taken up fireplaces. And there's also a deep there's also a deep cellar. So this drawing's still in progress under here. Uh, I've got photographs and bits of it. That's the cellar. Uh, again, we had to uh, empty that with the machine. It just got too got too deep. But you can still see the tool marks. The masons left when they carved it. This thing hanging in space is a Victorian chimney breast. Uh, we found bits of medieval pottery in here. And another possible early bit is this well. How do we know it's early? Because you've got a Victorian wall running across it. So the well's been filled in and the Victorian wall's been built across, so it's got to be pre-1850. Um, this is that south wing of the hall. Again, we've stripped off, off all the Victorian um, additions. And unfortunately, when Victorians did their work up Newton Hall, they robbed out all of the 17th century floor levels. So we, sadly, we didn't find as much pottery as we were expecting to find. Sometime in the 18th century, this little wing was added here. It's, if you remember that paint, the Bordell's painting, the one with a bit of mishmash of features, that showed that wing was quite narrow, and we've got some excavated proof of that here, but the painting just doesn't add up together. Whether it was just a lucky piece of bad draftsmanship or not, I don't know. But that's that wall there. All of these later ones, all of these, these other, other walls here are later. That's the wall that you can see on that drawing, and that's the cobbled floor that probably went with it. Uh, it's probably added as uh, cold stores, butcheries, pantries. Then, sometime in the 19th century, looking at the maps, they demolished that bit and they extended it this way, made it uh, look bigger there. And we know that's a later addition, not just because of all the paintings and drawings and maps, but because we've got what's called a butt join here. This wall isn't bonded into that one. That's, that's the later wall there. Looks a nice straight joint here. That's one of the ways we look at building. And then, look at the 1850s. Uh, all this Victorian bits were added in. That, this, and that's what you saw on that first area of view. So this is the south wing again. You can see they've added in these internal... They've thickened this wall quite a lot. Put in these, chi these chimneys were added. Again, which ties in with the paint the painting evidence. New, ch new chimneys have gone in here, and that, that one was a replacement as well, so you can tell by looking at the bricks. Um, so, for example, uh, this is that south wing again, 